Well, thanks. I'm Phil Reese, and I'm here to talk about fanless servers today. Uh, let's start here. So one of the uh, main goals of this uh, session that we had was to kind of figure out what, would, what we could do to greatly improve the efficiency of servers, efficiency of cooling of servers. So that was our number one goal. And then the definition of, for this particular track is to investigate alternative uh, methods of cooling servers than just conventional air cooling of servers. So that's what we spent our time talking about. Some examples of technologies that, that address this are a cool plate technology that's being developed. Um, uh, related to that in some sense is removing fans from servers uh, to, to recoup that uh, energy from the fans. Closed loop racks. And then, of course, the other thing we want to encourage is other solutions to this problem. This is by far uh, an emerging technology, so there's likely to be other solutions that uh, we haven't thought about. The issue with uh, the fanless servers is that it's an emerging technology. They're, we're really only in the prototype uh, phase of this, so there's no real clear uh, path forward of what, what people are going to do with this, but it's a very uh, interesting and, and exciting direction forward. One of the questions that come up, of course, is, well, is this only going to be for the 1U servers? What about the blades? How are we going to uh, cool the blades with uh, alternative cooling methods? Related to that, in terms of blades and the 1Us, is, well, where is the heat generated? Uh, we all know that uh, the, the big bugaboo for many years was the CPU getting warm. Uh, that's still the case, by the way. But uh, the memory is also the, a bigger component uh, than it used to be perhaps even larger than the CPUs. And there might be other components in, the, in a server over time that are going to get hot as well. Disks, probably not, but uh, wanted to just mention them. Because the, uh, the cooling takes place at a very defined uh, interface, uh, it's important to understand the efficiencies of what happens at that cooling interface. And so the, the, the physics of what goes on there is going to be a very important uh, area of study to, as a, the fluid or the cooling media that goes over the, the cooling mechanism uh, uh, progresses. It's important to understand that. Um, the other thing that we don't want to forget about is, you know, there's, we're not the first ones to do this. The, the craze and mainframes have done it for a while. We've got a little experience with some uh, uh, chilled water cabinets, and there might be some value that they can bring to, to these issues. So where can they be used in the data center? Well, um, certainly we anticipate that new servers, some server manufacturer or perhaps multiple server manufacturers will offer it as an offering. And there's likely to have some retrofit kits available to uh, go into existing SKUs of servers. Another issue is, well, what about storage devices? They get warm too. Network gear. Uh, Addressing servers is a, goes a long way, but we can't forget about these other devices that are in our data centers. So the opportunities that this area brings is to remove the fan power, and that will redu reduce the total IT load, which, which goes well into uh, PUE computation, of course. And then related to uh, the way that uh, refrigerant cooling works is that there's a much stronger probability of being able to use air and water side economizers to do the actual cooling of the refrigerant. And that, therefore, you don't have to get into as, as dense uh, a chiller plant. You may even just be able to get by with cooling towers and not go to the full uh, chiller plant. An idea that we uh, uh, grappled with is, do we just have a few racks in a data center for specific purposes or a specific density? Or do we go with the completely other end of, of a full enterprise? And a, a middle ground that we suggested is uh, a, a fanless container of servers, so that you have a container that's outfitted with racks of these fanless uh, server technology of one sort or another, and then a sister container that contains the, uh, the, the, the generators and the UPSs, and also the, the air and water side uh, economizers based on part of the country that you're in and the way you want to run your, your cooling operation. That's a nice way to, to deal with the, uh, uh, the issue and to get quite high density. Server benefits, of course, um, uh, uh, 
Because there's no fans, or the, the idea would be to remove the fans, that leaves more real estate within the server box, so you can get higher density. Because you're removing the heat right at, at the uh, place where the heat is produced, you can get higher density in terms of uh, computing power, more RAM, more things that get hot inside a server. Uh, the other thing that we came upon, of course, is a data center full of fanless servers would be quiet. So that was a nice thing that we all know the, the uh, wind, wind noise that we hear in a data center. And it's also likely that uh, uh, deploying fanless racks could be a more costly or less costly solution than, than actually retrofitting a, a facility. Of course, we have some concerns with the technology. Uh, we mentioned this before. It's hardly beyond a prototype at the moment, but uh, uh, and there's perceived difficulties with deployment. The, the, the whole issue of bringing water into the data center, we've kind of gotten over that, but bringing refrigerant into the data center, there's still some issues around that that are, are perceptions perhaps more than realities, but they're yet to be determined. Uh, where would the, uh, uh, the technology come from? Well, could be from all the typical server manufacturers. Um, it may be so far as that there'd be a SKU that's Here's a, 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 a server model that has fans, and here's a server model, that, the same server model that just doesn't have fans. That may be in the direction forward. There could be the possibility of, of a third party retrofit. So a third party is certified by a server manufacturer to, to, to mess with the cooling of a server and, and provide this solution. Uh, there's potential for warranty issues, but um, they, they would be worked out by the third party before it would be accepted. The other possibility is that there's a, a new server manufacturer that would come out and offer a complete solution. That you'd roll in a rack, and that would be the, uh, the uh, uh, solution. You'd, you'd attach it, quick connect to your refrigerant lines, your power and, and your networking, and the, the server rack would come online. We struggled for a long time with trying to debate, is this an enterprise solution, or is this a boutique solution? And it may be for both. It, it's too new in, the, in, the, in this emerging market to know where the right, right sweet spot is for it. Uh, we do worry about uh, the, the typical implementation is uh, you, you put a pilot out there, you have two or three racks, and then you say, this is great. Let's go to three dozen racks. And your whole refrigerant and your whole infrastructure plant now needs to scale up. And that, that can be a difficult thing in, in the data centers. Can't forget about redundancy. You have these very hot servers running, and the uh, refrigerant is cooling them, works great. What happens if there's a problem with the, the, the refrigerant path and the, the cooling goes away? There's definitely possibilities for redundancy, but you have to really think about that. The, the <clears throat> other significant point is that, we mentioned, again mentioned before, is that in, in all these data centers, you can't just do away with the conventional cooling because you need that for the, the hard drives, the servers, the storage, sorry, the storage, and the networking gear. As uh, we came to conclusion of, on this topic, uh, we, we hearkened back to a high level. We took, tried to take the high road. And that, of course, goes back to standards. And so we wanted to encourage global standards to be established, uh, perhaps by, something like, by a group like ASHRAE or something like that to identify what the thermal interface uh, characteristics need to be in order to transfer the heat out of the server into a cooling medium, whatever it may be. And to have that identified, and that way server manufacturers are more willing and more likely to generate product that addresses that, that need. Um, the other thing we want to include in those standards, of course, is the, the hoses and the connectors that, that bring this all together so that, again, it's a very standard thing we're going to talk a lot about metrics, and the idea is just to be able to fit this into a, a data center in a natural way. And that's as far as we got so far. There's more going on in our online world, and we hope you'll participate in it with it. Yeah.